Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Red Donkey Projections. My name is Lucas, and I'm Eric here as always. Hey guys. And today we'll be taking a look at Joe Biden's pathway to victory in the 2020 presidential election. As with the last episode, this is not a best case scenario. Instead, we're simply laying out the states that Biden needs to win or can win in order to take the presidency and reach that 270 threshold. We'll be showing multiple examples and discussing through what he can do to win. We have here the 2016 election map, and we'll go through which states he needs to flip. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right. So as I said before, this is our 2016, I'm sorry, not our 2016 map, but the 2016 electoral map. Let's discuss our first most likely scenario, and it would be this. Biden takes back the blue wall. We're going to go state by state on this one. Wisconsin, they've got big cities here. Milwaukee, Madison. If those voter groups turn up and they go out and vote, if we see higher turnout there, this will benefit Biden. Because like any Democratic candidate, they do well with the city voters. Additionally, Biden can also pull in those white working class voters that voted for President Trump in 2016. In 2016, it shocked everyone that the white working class voters ended up going for Trump, even though they usually went for the Democrats. Why else do we think this is likely for Biden to win? Because he has 7% in the polls right now. Again, polling is not our main indicator, but it's definitely a big one that's here. And finally, as with all the states in the blue wall, Biden needs to visit these states like, unlike Hillary Clinton in 2016. He needs to go campaign here and not just like visit it once like Clinton did. This way, he will attract a lot of voters, which will help him win these states. So Wisconsin, the reason why we're putting this here, it's one of the likely states, just like Michigan and Pennsylvania. Not that it's a likely characterization, but out of the other states here, it's probably going to go to Biden. And the second state is Michigan, which is also pretty likely to go to Biden as well. This is the most likely state we think at the moment that Biden can flip from Donald Trump in 20, from 2016. I'm going to actually change the color here. I apologize um, to the, the green color. We're saying what, is, what he can do to win. Mm -hmm. So Michigan, he can increase the African-American turnout. If they see increased African-American turnout, which might really happen due to the recent Black Lives Matter protests, that will definitely help Joe Biden here. And Joe Biden usually does well with African-American voters, as we saw in the 2020 Democratic primary. And African-Americans do tend to vote for the Democratic candidate. Here we see another seven-point lead, I believe 7.6-point lead here, actually, for Joe Biden. That's a very solid margin within our likely characterization. Therefore, we do think that in the most likely scenario for Joe Biden's pathway to victory, Michigan is part of that. And Eric will be explaining Pennsylvania, the last state in this first most likely scenario for Joe Biden's pathway to the presidency. Yep. Let's head on over to Pennsylvania. So as Lucas has established, this is a swing state. You know, he voted for Obama in 20, 2008, but then things changed and did vote for Trump in 2016. Not by much but he was able to take the state. Um, essentially, as Lucas has explained, it has, Pennsylvania has two components to it. It has the east side with all the cities, um, urban areas that Democrats usually are able to take, such as Philadelphia. It's so, it's so big that it's its own county. And there is the central part of Pennsylvania, which is more rural, and more Republican for that matter. And those are the counties that pushed Donald Trump over the edge. There were just a lot of Republican counties that were in support of Donald Trump and more populated areas like the Philadelphia area could not just, they could not compete with those rural counties. We do think that Joe Biden is going to take this state. He definitely has to campaign here. He has, you know, he was born here, not necessarily lived his whole life here, but he was born here, and that gives him this um, home state advantage. So if he does a lot of campaigning here, and if the polls um, are right, then 
Joe Biden can definitely take the state. And it's very likely at the moment because Pennsylvania right now, I think it's like for Biden plus six. Yeah, I think somewhere around there. And I absolutely agree with you here. Joe Biden needs to get those voters out from the big cities and the big counties that are usually vote solidly Democratic. In 2016, Philadelphia County did go to Hillary Clinton in a very sound margin, 80 to 90 percent. But at the end of the day, it's not about winning the county. It's about getting a lot of votes from those big city counties. If Joe Biden can drive up turnout in the Philadelphia County or Montgomery County and get a lot of voters there to kind of outweigh the more Republican counties, Joe Biden can definitely win this state here. Polling, as Eric said, backs up our point that we do think that Pennsylvania um, is pretty likely also to go to Joe Biden here. If we were to rank these three states of how solid they are for Joe Biden, it goes Michigan first, Pennsylvania second, and Wisconsin third. In that order, that we think that uh, the margins will be. So essentially, we're saying that Pennsylvania will be voting to the right of Michigan, but to the left of Wisconsin. So again, this is our most likely scenario here. Let's say that Trump does win Wisconsin. What other options does Joe Biden have? Florida. Mm -hmm. If Donald Trump is able to take Wisconsin, which of the three, as I said, is the most likely one to go to Joe Biden, sorry, Donald Trump, he can carry Florida. And as you see with throughout this video, Joe Biden has a lot of scenarios he can take to win at the moment because he is the favorite to win this election. Mm -hmm. Why Florida? We made a whole video about this. DeSantis is not handling COVID-19 well. He is not handling it very aggressively. And like, as Ethan said, he's not keeping the public informed like someone like Cuomo did. This is going to look bad on Trump because DeSantis campaigned on the basis of being a huge Trump ally. Um, people might kind of associate those two together, which will be very bad for Trump in the state of Florida. Additionally, with the recent events of Black Lives Matter, there could be higher Hispanic turnout because a lot of Hispanics do back the Black Lives Matter movement and not just Hispanics, but people in general too, white people, um, because the majority majority of Americans do support the Black Lives Matter movement now. As a result, we could see higher turnout in counties like Miami-Dade, Orlando, Broward County. Higher turnout there would be very good for Biden since it would outweigh kind of the more Republican counties there. And finally, Polling also supports this because Biden is currently up six and a half points. That is within our likely margins, and that's really solid. That is, in fact, to the left of a state like Arizona, one that we gave to Joe Biden but didn't give Florida to in our election night a few weeks ago. So this is pretty surprising to see. So this is, in our opinions, the second most likely scenario for Joe Biden to win the election. Let's talk about him with the possibility of losing Florida. At the moment, it doesn't look too likely that he will lose with either Wisconsin or Florida. But let's say he does. Um, what else can we do? And I should also include that um, these are not our predictions. I mean, they kind of are. But we're just kind of trying to showcase what states Biden needs to be exactly 270 over or slightly over 270. Because in reality, a lot of these states in our predictions are going blue. North Carolina, Texas, well, not, not Texas, but North Carolina, Arizona, and Florida. So these are not our actual predictions here. Um, all right. The next state we should probably talk about flipping is Joe Biden loses Florida. What else can he do? Arizona. Eric, you want to talk about Arizona? Yeah. So it's kind of following um, the same procedure as Florida, essentially. They do have. Um, a pretty significant Hispanic electorate that, of course, is in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. There are countless articles to prove that. Um, the thing is, though, that Arizona does ha does have a lot of very conservative Republicans. But the thing is, they are being balanced out by these Hispanic by this Hispanic electorate. Um, the handling of coronavirus here is also not amazing. Nothing. Um, terrible compared to what Florida is experiencing right now. But some people here are not satisfied with um, the handling of this virus here. So it's probably going to follow um, the same suit as, as Florida and is probably going to flip. And if even if Joe Biden does only take 
Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, he has the win. Yes. And I think it's important to note that <clears throat> if Arizona to flip were to flip, we think Florida would probably flip as well. So mm -hmm. um, these are kind of like isolated types of examples. Um, so this is our third most likely scenario. Now, what if he loses Arizona? Or heck, what if he loses the blue wall? Is he done? The answer is no. What if he flips Texas? That would be huge. This that is the first be, time Texas yeah. flips since, I believe, 1976 when Carter defeated Gerald, Gerald Ford. This would be historic. Um, to make it clear, though, we don't think this is that likely. Mm -hmm. um, the polls are kind possible. of yeah. The polls are kind of fluctuating at the moment, but as of today, July 28th, um, Joe Biden is winning by 0.8. I'm sure that's going to fluctuate a lot. We can't really be certain that Texas is going to flip, but that would be you no. Know, that would be huge. Just look, he doesn't. He doesn't need any battleground state, nothing. Well, of course, except Texas. He doesn't need Arizona, Georgia, North Carolina, 75% of the blue wall. He, if he takes Texas, yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. So this is why this is our – Um, actually, I would say this is actually our fifth um, most likely 270 scenario. Our fourth most likely would be North Carolina. We'll go into that after Texas. Essentially, Texas here, we have Biden up right now by 0.7. It's been very much fluctuating. Yesterday, it was a tie. The day before that, it was Trump leading, so it's really been back and forth here. Biden, up, Biden is up by 0.7. This is nothing that Hillary Clinton was ever able to do in 2016. So Biden could also see high Hispanic turnout. With higher Hispanic turnout, that would look good for Biden. What else does he need? He also needs these southern counties of Texas, where there's a lot of those um, Hispanics that the Hispanic electorate in Southern Texas, if those numbers go up as well, that will also be very good for Biden. So um, we do think that it's definitely possible that Texas flips. It's definitely on the table now. A few months ago, it was not on the table. Now it's definitely mm -hmm. on the table. So this is another possible 270 scenario. And our final 270 scenario is, let's go back to Biden wins Michigan, Pennsylvania, since those are kind of the two most least likely states to flip at this point, he can take North Carolina. Honestly, between North Carolina and Arizona, it's pretty much tied on our ranking list. North Carolina has a pretty decent African-American electorate, and if we see increased turnout there because of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, which we did see a lot in the city of Charlotte, increased turnout there would probably also look good for Biden since he's, he does well with African-American voters. And African-American voters, again, do usually vote for the Democratic candidate. Currently, Biden's up by about two points in North Carolina. So North Carolina, would North, the combination of North Carolina, Michigan, and Pennsylvania would be not that much of a surprise of a combination. I just I wanted to add um, a, a smaller combination that only adds 24 mm -hmm. electoral votes to um, Joe Biden. That would be um, Iowa and Ohio. This is also one of the less likely ones here. Yeah, so Iowa and Ohio do add 24 electoral votes. Um, not together, not the most, but if they take a state like Michigan, then it could be possible. 40 electoral votes, that puts Joe Biden at 272. Um, Iowa and Ohio do have um, the um, white uh, middle class, or the, the working class, I should say, that you know, tends to vote more Democratic. The thing is, in 2016, they were really in support of Donald Trump. Iowa is a bit less likely than Ohio. Polling does show Iowa in the lead, but Ohio, it's getting really competitive there. And if Joe Biden um, does have some spare time to campaign here, it would be, um, it, it, it would be very, you know, that would be just a lot on top of the landslide that Biden could take that we project in our previous projections. And I agree with that as well. This is probably one of the less likely scenarios. Biden's currently up in Ohio by 0.8, which narrowed a lot recently. Iowa shows Trump up by like 1.7 around there. Anyways, that's the end of the video, but I do want to go through the recap again of all these 270 scenarios. Remember that these um, scenarios put Biden just over 270. 
These are not our predictions because our predictions do show Biden at around 334. So the first combination here, the most likely here for exactly 270, um, actually a little bit more, but um, blue wall, takes the blue wall, focuses time here, he can win. Second most likely scenario, he loses Wisconsin, he grabs Florida. And then the third most likely scenario, he grabs Arizona, loses Florida. Um, fourth most likely would be grabbing North Carolina. Fifth most likely would be losing actually the blue wall and grabbing Texas still, but still wins. And the final scenario, the least likely scenario to us, but still on the table, although not really likely, takes Michigan, Ohio, Iowa, and wins the election. So that's the end of the video for today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this episode, please hit the like button. If you like our content, please subscribe. We'll see you in our next episode tomorrow. See ya.